Hey animal enthusiasts and pet hobbyists, it's Joel here again, and this is my new curly haired tarantula named Harry. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how I'm setting up my curly hair tarantula's enclosure. So I got the 12 by 12 by 15 front opening terrarium by Zilla. As you can see, here it is. And for the terrarium setup, I was inspired by the 2005 film King Kong directed by Peter Jackson. This is one of my all-time favorite movies because of the biodiversity and science fiction of it. Throughout the movie, you can see the forests are filled with different ferns and mosses. In one scene, there's the insect pit, which is filled with dark caves, branches, and different arthropods, which is what inspired me to make this terrarium. So here are just the general items that the Zilla terrarium includes. To open the terrarium, you just twist the front door lock and then remove the locking pins from the sides. And as you can see, it has this realistic rock foam background which I plan to use. And then it also comes with this screen top, which can be a little bit controversial when it comes to keeping tarantulas since they could get their tarsal stuck, but I haven't had any issues. So to start the setup, I first began by wiping both sides of the enclosure with rubbing alcohol. This is because I'm going to be adding expanding foam on here. Then I started rearranging the ornaments such as rocks and wood, just to get an idea of what it looks like before adding the expanding foam. Once I liked the way things looked, I started to add the expanding foam. The product I'm using is called Waterfall Foam Sealant by Total Pond, which I was able to pick up at my local Home Depot. Once I completely covered the side with the foam, I began to sprinkle Eco Earth onto it while it was still uncured since it is still very sticky. I gave the foam 24 hours to fully cure and dry before I proceeded to the next side. During this, I decided to improve the foam background that was already included with this terrarium. To do this, I used 100% silicone which is commonly used for aquariums and I started adding it to all the cracks and crevices of the background. I then used the tool to smear and spread out the silicone so it'll have a larger surface area. Once the silicone has been covered and spread out, I began to sprinkle Eco Earth onto it. The silicone basically acts as a safe glue to stick the Eco Earth onto the background. The main reasons I'm doing this is to give the background a little bit more of a naturalistic look as well as to get the color schemes to match up and blend with the other two sides that I'm going to be creating with the expanding foam. And finally, this was the outcome of the background once I completed it. Once those two sides were cured, I began working on the right side. So here I am just organizing the ornaments, like the rocks, and I want a plant on this side, so I put a pot. So here I am adding the expanding foam to cover everything. And I put a paper towel inside the pot so that the expanding foam won't expand and get inside the pot and I actually got this idea from Serpa Design who is one of my favorite terrarium builders. And then once again I started sprinkling the eco earth over the uncured foam. My next step to add some more decoration was this black jungle vine which I thought would look well to create some branches. So this was the final look of the terrarium once both sides of the expanding foam was complete. And then I began adding the substrate. So because curly haired tarantulas are a burrowing species, I'm going to add quite a few layers of eco earth. And here I am just adding it piling it up and then I ended up adding this other branch just for some more decoration 
I then started to add a little bit of Zoomed's Creature Soil, which is a mix of peat moss, soil, sand, and carbon. And then I ended up mixing it with the dry eco earth just so that it has a little bit more moisture. So this was the completed look with the expanding foam plus the substrate. And I'm using this Exoterra light which is pretty old but it's not too much of a big deal since tarantulas don't really need a lot of light. And then I started to add more decorations like these branches to create a more vine like appearance on the walls. And I do this by sticking them through the expanding foam. My next step was to add a hide, and I had a few different positions in mind, but I ended up putting it next to the large branch in the middle. Then to add more humidity, I soaked some sphagnum moss. I then spread it around the terrarium wherever it would look the most natural. At this time, the enclosure was safe enough for new inhabitants, so I added Harry. The only thing needed left was a water dish. And here is Harry's naturalistic looking water dish. And then finally, this is Harry in their new terrarium. This is Harry exploring his or her new enclosure. So the last and final step was to add some live plants. So here I have this small fern and some sheet moss. I added the fern to the pot that I created. I trimmed off some of the drying and dying leaves and then I gave it a little bit of water. I then soaked the sheet moss in water and began placing it on the sides of the terrarium as well as the substrate. So this was the final look of the terrarium after all the decorations and live plants have been added. In the back, I place a thermometer and humidity gauge just to measure the temperature and humidity levels. So yeah guys, this is Harry in his or her new burrow and new enclosure inspired by King Kong Skull Island. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want to see updates and future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.